Do you hear me? Do you hear me? I'm trembling right now. My hands are shaking, wet, and my mind keeps wondering and thinking. I, I can't really breathe as normal. Then I suddenly heard a voice. I was now in panic, and then someone passed something to me, and then fear crawls to my whole body. I, I really want to walk away, but I can't. I really can't. I must take this exam. Now, my dear friends, what makes exam a hateful thing? I believe there's something inside you and me. Let us bow our heads for a prayer. Father God in heaven, we want to ask for the Holy Spirit to feel our hearts and our minds right now so that we will be more than conquerors because of your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Good afternoon, everyone. Parang na-stress kayo kanina. This afternoon, how was your day? Is it great? Uh, how are you enjoying the shortened period of classes? Do you love it? <laughs> then don't go to school. <laughs> but it's the atmosphere of the week of prayer. And I hope you are loving the atmosphere of our week of prayer. And throughout the week, we will be dealing with our theme. What is our theme? Again? Okay, it's fearless. And so this afternoon, we would learn one of our fears and how to overcome it. So who among you have experienced the one I dramatized earlier? Have you feel that way too? Could you raise your hand? Oh, thank you, thank you. Thank you for that brave hand. Indeed, sometimes it's really happening in us. And I myself have experienced that one seven years ago when I take my first exam in high school. I really fear that I might fail the exam, that the exam might be so hard for me, and then finally I would get a low grade. And even I have terror on grade sheets, you know, opening the envelope and then seeing what will be your cards. So I have a lot of fears during that time. And it's the fear of what? Failure. It's the fear of what? Failure. And so fear of failure is not really new. It is almost happening any moment in time in your life. But now let me define what is fear. If we will define fear, it is a distressing emotion arose by impending danger, evil, pain, etc. Whether the threat is real or imagined. So most of the time, it's just in the mind. Your fears are working in your mind. And how about failure? What is failure? Failure defined as an act or instance of failing or proving unsuccessful. So we will combine these two. Fear of failure is the mindset that tells you that you will fail whatever you do. It's the mindset that tells you that you will fail whatever you do. For example, who among you have thought or experienced that way? That whatever you do, I know I would fail. In last week, do you experience that one during our exams? <laughs> Whatever I do, even though I magsinug ng kilay, yan. Even though I end up sleeping late, I really can't make it. I really can't pass the exam. Have you thought the, that same way? And so there's a lot of experiences, just like in your math subject or English subject. Have you thought that whatever review, whatever you study, you will do, you will fail? How about courting someone? Have you thought that you will fail in doing so? 
I know a lot. <laughs> and so, right now, I want to explore on how this fear of failure could affect us and what this fear of failure could offer us. And so let us come to the Bible in Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25. Here's the story of a master. And this master has how many servants? How many servants? Three servants. And the master said, I am going on a trip. And I want you to take my money and invest it. So the first guy or the first servant get the money, invest it, and finally doubled it. And the master was satisfied. And here comes the second person, the second servant. He took the money, invested, and doubled it. And again, the master was satisfied. But now we will look at the third guy, or the third servant. In verse 24, the first point in which fear of failure could offer us could be seen in verse 24. It says, then the man who had received the one talent came. Master, I knew that you are a hard man. What again? Hard man? Harvesting where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. Now I want to point out what had come up to the third servant's mind. Because of his fear that he might fail in increasing the money, because of his fear that he might lose the money. Here comes in his mind a wrong conception. Again, wrong conception. A wrong idea about his master. Commentary says that saying that the master is a hard man or a harsh man or a strict man is unjust because it's not true. The master is a good man. The master is a good man. And so when we have this fear of failure, most of the time, we have wrong ideas in our mind. We have wrong conceptions. Some of us would thought, Sayang, I should have courted her. Di naman pala siya mataray. <laughs> and most of us, when we want to ask our parents, permission for a trip. Instead of asking permission, we will escape, you know? Because we fear that our parents won't allow us. But then, after that one, our, fear, our parents would say, you should have asked permission, my son. You should have asked permission, my daughter. I would allow you. So sometimes, this fear of failure gives us a wrong conception. And most of the time, it gives us a wrong conception about our God. Most of the time, we thought God couldn't accept me because I'm a great sinner, because I have done a lot of continuous sin to Him. But then, isn't He a forgiving God? Isn't He a loving God? Most of the time, we have a wrong conception about God. And even to children, we say, Jesus. Have you heard that one? So most of the time, we're giving wrong conception about God. And because of that, children would not have a closer relationship with God. Well, in fact, in Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7, it says, The Lord, the Lord, a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abundant in steadfast love and faithfulness, keeping steadfast love for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, but who will by no means clear the guilty. So the first thing that fear of failure could do to us is to have a wrong conception. So we jump to the next one. In verse 25, of chapter 25 it says 
I was afraid. And I went out and hid the talent in the ground. See? Hear what belongs to you. Now what did that third person or the servant did? He hid. He went out and hid the talent. Why do you think he did that one? He gave the reason. I am afraid. He was afraid to fail. He has that fear of failure, that he cannot double it, that he cannot use it efficiently. I always remember a turtle. When it was stuck his head on his shell, it seems like he's so very fearful, you know. But then because of that one, he cannot see the beautiful world outside. And so this fear of failure paralyzes millions of people. Before and even right now, uh, I had a fear of failing in singing the right tunes and singing with accompaniment. Because I don't often, I can't often follow the rhythm like that one. And so when they will ask me uh, for a special number, a special song, I need to think a lot. <laughs> I need to think a lot. And before I accept one, I should have a lot of practice. Maybe 20 times, that would be enough. And sometimes I also did singing, but it's only when there's no real choice. You know? I have no choice. And so, my friends, how did this fear have led you to run away and heed your talent? How this fear of failure had kept your talents inside and not doing what the Lord wants you to do? How many offers of serving God have you missed already because of this fear? Maybe because of this fear of failure, you are now a great coward. For this fear of failure improves you being a coward. And so the first point is that fear of failure can give us wrong conception. And the second point is that fear of failure makes you an improved coward. Do you want that one? Of course not. And so we will jump out to the next. The third one that fear of failure could do to us could be found in verse 26 of chapter 25. But the master replied, You wicked and lazy servant! You knew that I've harvested crops I didn't plant and gathered crops which I have not sown. Why did you deposit my money in the bank? At least I could have gotten some interest in it. And in verse 30, the master said, Now throw this useless servant into outer darkness, where there will be whipping and gnashing of feet. Now, the third servant is called what? Wicked and lazy servant. Useless servant. Because of what? That fear of failure. Because of his fear of failure. Because of this fear of failure, we could have received failed commendations. We could receive that failed commendations. Have you remembered before when your friends are asking you, hey, ride this bike. Just try it, you know. And then finally, you can't make it. You know, you can't ride the bike because you're too afraid. And they will say to you, ah, bakla ka, bakla ka. You're coward, dog ka. Diba? So most of the time before, when we have that fear of failure, we receive failed commendations instead of recommendations. And so that is the third thing that fear of failure could offer us. Yet, my dear brothers and sisters, I don't want you to stay being 
or having that fear of failure. After learning the unwanted consequences or effects of fear of failure, let us now start getting rid of it. Do you want to get rid of fear of failures? Can I see your hands? I myself want it too. Because we don't want an F grade, right? Yes, I don't want it. And we don't even want to be called loser, right? I remember my little, uh, our little girl in the house, when we are telling him, you're such a loser, and then he will shout and cry on top of his voice. And so even the little child didn't want to be called that you're such a loser. And so my friends, I want to share three F, but it's, it's not meaning fail. Three F that will help us to conquer the fear of failure. This would be a step-by-step -step process. Three Fs to conquer our fear of failure. For example, you would be given a task to speak during the week of prayer, just like me. What if you are here? What if you are given a task to do this one? How would you react? To, our, to my co-speakers, how did you react? <laughs> would you jump for joy? Saying, yes! It's my time to shine! But then, I feel the other way. Instead of feeling that one, my heart beat faster, you know? I think it's nervousness. And my mouth became silent, and nothing is my only response to Pastor Kadalig and Pastor, Pastor Del Rosario. I just say, opo, Pastor, opo. With a lot of sigh, releasing. And why I, I am experiencing that one, that one? Because I myself is a victim too of this subject. I myself is a victim of this fear of failure. And so my friends, that time, I realized that I could really fail. I realized that I might fail to deliver, to deliver a good sermon to you. I realized I might fail to get your interest. I realized that I might fail to be with the Holy Spirit as I speak. I also realized I might fail to say the right appeal in front of you. And I realized that I might fail to leave what I preach. And so the first thing that I had experienced in overcoming failure is to have a foresight of failure. What again? A foresight of failure. Is it wrong? Is it wrong to realize that I could fail? In James 3, 2, it says, For we all stumble in many ways. And a study had been done, and they discovered that the failure rate of human being, failure rate, is what? 70? 80? No. It's 100% the failure rate of human beings. It's 100%. So the first thing, or the first step that we must do in overcoming our fear of failure is to have a foresight of failure. Even Paul, in Romans 7, 14 and 15, please turn your Bibles in Romans 7, 15, I mean 14 and 15. So the trouble is not with the law, for it is spiritual and good. The trouble is with me, for I am all too human. I am a slave of sin. I don't really understand myself, for I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. 
in verse 18, 18, And I know that nothing good lives in me that is in my sinful nature. I want to do what is right, but I can't. Even Paul recognized that in doing the will of God, in following God, we could fail. We could fail. So the first step is having that foresight of failure. But then since it's a step-by-step process, I don't want you to stop in the first step. You must jump off to the next step. We must jump off to the next step. If you stop on the first step, it would be like Jonah running away. It would be like the third servant hiding and running away. And so we must move forward to the next step. And the next step is another F, faith in God. Again, what is another F? Faith in God. What is faith? Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Faith is assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. And what God means, the word God means, in 1 John 4.16, you will find there that God is love. And in 1 John 4, 18, 1 John 4, 18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear, because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. So I do believe in the coach which says, Love conquers all. Why? Because God conquers all. Do you believe so? Amen. Indeed, God could conquer all. And now, the next step we need to take after for assigning failure is having faith with God. You know what? Without faith in God, I would not be standing here. I might be in some pagita hall in our room and hiding in the closet and left you here waiting for a speaker. But then because of that faith in God, that God could do miracles, that God could do the impossible thing, I'm here in front of you. How how it became possible? Romans 10, 17 says, For faith comes from hearing and hearing the word of God. When finally... I have internalized the Word of God, the promises of God. My faith increases. When I internalize what God said in Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. When I realize in Matthew 19.26, with man this is impossible, but with God is, it is possible. I am here and I have faith in God. So the more we read the Bible, the more we join church services, the more we listen to the Holy Spirit, the more we will have that faith that could overcome this fear of failure. Even Paul struggled in doing the will of God in Romans 8, 3 and 4. Paul had that faith in God. In Romans 8, 3 and 4, it says, The law of Moses was unable to save us because of the weakness of our sinful nature. So God did the law could not do. He sent his own son in a body like the bodies we sinners have. And in that body, God declared an end to sins control over us by giving his son as a sacrifice for our sins. He did this so that the just requirement of the law would be fully satisfied for us who no longer follow our sinful nature, but instead follow the Spirit. In a simple sense, the verses said that through Jesus Christ's sacrifice and sinless life, we human beings could fulfill the requirement of the law of God. We could follow the will of God only 
by having faith in God and the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. You know what? Paul could have ended up depressed during that time. You knew the background of Paul. He had been a murderer of the Christians. He had a lot of temptations in his body. If he had not have faith in God, he could have, been, he could have not done his ministry. He could not have served God and do the will of God. So the same thing with Paul, we could also put our faith in God, trusting that he is an all-powerful God. But yet, we need to do the next thing, the next step, which is move forward with God. Move forward with God. We must not end up believing and doing nothing. I remember a story of a father and a daughter. Um, one day, that father left his daughter in, in her house, and it ended up that the house is burning, and it's the daughter who is inside the house while the father is away. And while this house is burning, of course, the little child is crying and crying, not until that he heard her father saying, Daughter, daughter, do you hear me? Do you hear me? Yes, father. But because of the smoke, I can see you, father, but I can't see you. It's okay, my child. It's okay, my dear, the father said. Just jump off the stairs because I can see you. Just jump off the stairs, my daughter. If you were the daughter, would you jump off the stairs, even though you cannot see your father, will you? And so the daughter did jump, and he and she was saved. And so, my dear friends, after having faith in God, we need to move forward with God. We can't afford to be consumed by the fire. We need to move forward with God. Um, kindly bear with it. Now, I want to tell you a secret. Um, Pastor Kadalig and my co-speakers didn't know this one, but it will be just between you and me, you know? <laughs> um, when I was uh, appointed to be a speaker of this week of prayer, it's a month ago. It's a month ago. And so, having a month preparation for me, it's just enough. It's just enough to prepare. And so I make my sermon. I'm taking a homiletics class, which is about sermon. So I'm quite confident that I, that I can make it, you know. But then, not until yesterday that I realized. Yesterday, what is the day yesterday? Sunday, right? It's Sunday. Not until yesterday that I realized that I'm not really prepared. That my sermon, my prepared sermon, is just like a clanging symbol. Why clanging symbol? It's meaningless. It's loveless. It's not spirit-filled. So yesterday I felt that way that my sermon would not be so effective. But then this early morning, that's the only time that I experienced my own sermon, that I experienced 
conquering my own fear of failure. Early morning, I told God, Lord, okay, I want to trust you, Lord. I know my sermon that I've prepared is wrong, would not be really inspiring. And so at this moment, Lord, I want to move forward with you. I want to make this sermon with you. And I want to trust you that as you have done it in the past, as you have guided me in the past, you would also guide me this early morning. And so you know what happened? The half of my sermon this afternoon is just made at 5 o'clock in the morning. I have a month-long preparation should be. But then, by the Holy Spirit working in me, it was just done earlier at 5 o'clock. And so I... I want you to read Romans 8, 16 and 17. It says there, For his spirit joins with our spirit to affirm that we are God's children. And since we are his children, we are his hearers. In fact, together with Christ, we are hearers of God's glory. But if we are to share his glory, we must also share his suffering. This time, in our third step, we must always do things or move forward with God. Whatever it may be, as simple as it may be, we must move forward with God. And so, my dear friends, after learning the three steps, what is the first one? Having foresight failures. And the second one, faith in God. And the third one, forward with God. So I want to leave you our very verse this afternoon, which Paul says in Romans 8, 37. Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him, through Christ. Who loved us. And so we can now be an overcomer of this paralyzing fear of failure. But before I sit down, before I finally end, I want to share a very cute story, <laughs> a very nice story. It's about my experience in my PE subject. Um, since then, I'm not a sporty person. Although I'm intellectual, but I'm not a sporty person. I just do PE things because of requirements, you know. But then when I came with my PE4, I need to choose a thing from volleyball. Is that volleyball or basketball? I choose basketball. How many you love basketball? Can I see your hands? Oh, I love basketball. But I'm not good at it, really. I'm not good at basketball. Although, uh, although I like people, I, I love seeing people playing it. I knew in myself that I'm not really good in dribbling, I'm not good in shooting, in passing, all of those. And my classmates know it, right? <laughs> my big classmates know it. But then, here comes our practical exam. Written exam would do, you know? Written exam would do. But in practical exam, it means we will do it the practical way, which is shooting. It's shooting, you know? And then, uh, on Sunday before that week, I tried my best to go to the gym and practice. And even uh, the minutes before the practical exam, I also practice and practice shooting. But I end up evaluating myself as having two out of 20 sh shots. Is that shots? 
two out of 20 shots. So that would mean I need, I, I, that would mean I would really fail. And we need, ha, uh, we do have 10 shots. And the passing score is, of course, half of it, five out of 10. And so before that very moment come, the practical exam, after practicing a little, I went to the CR of the gym. The CR is white, but then there's no people there, and I thank God. So it's become a prayer room. I went to the CR and prayed to God, Lord, uh, you know my weaknesses. You know that I can't make it. I have practiced, but then you know my ability that I could really fail. That I could really fail. And so, Lord, I put these things in your hands. I want to trust you. I want to believe in your power that you will be with my hands that I shoot that ball. And so I went out of that room, or the CR, and finally came to the hot seat. No, it's the hot court. <laughs> when I got there, I mean, I'm really trembling, literally. And my teacher is there. So it's, since it's my turn, I went uh, to the lines there. And when I tried my first shot, what do you think happened? It, is that in? No, it's out. And I became so fearful. But then my teacher said, oh, it's trial, you know, it's just trial. Don't be afraid. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Thank God. Thank God is trial. And then he told, he told me, um, maybe you could change your foot. I don't know. There's the right footing there. And I forgot it already. <laughs> and so what I did is follow his instruction with the right footing. And every time, you know, every time, each of that 10, every time that I would try my best to shoot, I would ask God, Lord, be with me. Lord, be with me as I shoot this one. I know it's really hard, but then be with me. And you know what? My, my classmates are looking at me. <laughs> They're telling me, it's just unfair. She's so Tagal. You know? <laughs> She's time-consuming. <laughs> but then there's no, there's no time limit. So it's okay for me. And so I do that one. And you know, after 10 shooting or 10 shots, I got, what do you think? Eight out of ten. Praise the Lord. And you know what? I'm even better than the male. They got seven out of ten. <laughs> I see the victory through God, through working with God, even in a simple way. Even in such a little experience, oh, the PE student is encouraged now, huh? <laughs> you really know what to do. And so this time, my dear friends, I want you to never ever forget these three steps of overcoming the fear of failure. What is the number one? Foresight of failure. The second one, faith in God. And the third one, forward with God. And so now, my friends, I want you to meditate upon how this fear of failures is making your life worst. How this fear of failures has affected your life right now? Is it a hindrance for you to serve the Lord? Is it a hindrance for you to do the will of God? How do you think you could apply these three steps in your life, knowing that the presence of God is there? And what if, what if Jesus Christ had the same fear of failure do you think he will go down on earth? Do you think 
who would save you? What if Jesus Christ had that fear of failure too? Did he use, do you think, the three steps that we have? Come to meditate upon it and let us listen to the song. and fear are in the hearts of people these are Satan's wiles to cause my life to stumble but in Christ I put my trust there's no need to tremble I am fearless because my whole life is in Jesus I am fearless because it's Christ who lives in me as I am folded in his breast there within his arms to rest I am fearless because he lives in me I am fearless because it's Christ who lives in me as I am folded in his breast within his arms to rest I am fearless because he lives in me I am fearless because he lives in me. Shall we all rise for a prayer? We praise you, our dear God in heaven, for you have made us conquerors over our fear of failure because of Jesus Christ who died for us. And so, Father God, fill every heart with faith in you, with trust in you, and with your presence so that we will move forward in every decision, in every trials, in every challenges, only with you and with you alone. For this is all we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.